The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And uh, on the 23rd, the Brexit situation is going on. So what we're going to do on Monday, Steve Banger and I talked about this yesterday. German descent very in the no guy and uh we're gonna have a a show on monday pretty much focusing on brexit the implications of that the ramifications what may happen and actually how it relates to possibly printing some money on the trading side so we're gonna kind of go through that in depth i wish you i wish everybody joined the show at eight o'clock i hope everybody I, we're gonna announce that again it, that's gonna be a cool show on monday it's going to be a cool show today, but uh, really looking forward to that. Steve is, uh, I learn something every time I get on the phone with him. And he is still in Chicago, so he's up there in the, uh, you know, that's kind of the, you look at New York and Chicago and uh, San Francisco, you know, you, the different exchanges, you know, you, got, you, you had the, the Pecoast out there and, you know, the guys in Chicago, the guys in, in New York. Chicago is, is just, really in my opinion i lived there for a long time it's the hardcore blue collar trading scene the new york scene a eh, little little different temperament up there but uh a lot of smart guys in chicago and it's and it's uh they're really not an inside information thing it's more of a blue collar trading thing up there and it's uh it's a great place to learn and larry will probably tell you that He's a Chicago guy. So I tell you what, uh, we're looking at the S&Ps right now. <laughs> and wanna, I want to show you that this is, I personally you know, put some weight on this trade. We talked about the breath situation in the scanner. Talked about the breath situation in the scanner. I'm going to pull that up in a second. And having that mixed breath and, and you know, talking about, you know, what would I do now? Wait for that kind of move below that 2077 2075 which happened a couple of days ago and then we always look at these things like god i hope this thing retraces back up into that level after it's broke down a little bit and that was the weekly unfair high daily unfair low this is i'm showing the daily unfair low now and just please for god's sake rally back up into the 2075 2077 area so we can look at the breath Hopefully, I have still a mixed bag. The daily showing some weakness on the on the breast side, and be able to kind of really put on a high probability trade situation. So we reached a high of twenty seventy nine fifty. That's that's noise around these areas. So again, you know, this is a decent little situation on the short side. But we talked about initially, you know, what's the targets on this? You've got to pay attention to these POCs on the weekly. So we've reached a little bit of a target, 2053.40. That's happened. So you got to be willing to, if you're day trading, depending on your time frames and all that kind of jazz, you've got to be looking at this. I've got to take something off here. Now, is it time to go long on this inflection point? In my opinion, no, it's not. Um, You've got a little bit, a little bit more to go here, I think, before you can start picking battles. And what you really want to see, if you're going to start playing around with that notion, which I'm, I'm trying to block out the long side right now. This Brexit thing is unsettling to say the least. Um, you know, how does that affect the euro? How does that, how does that affect the dollar? How does that affect a lot of things? How does that affect possible new alliances coming on? We're going to talk about all this on Monday from some of the other countries in Europe. The Netherlands of the world, the the Denmarks of the world, not that those are massive economies, but again, these are kind of domino effect things that can happen, and uh, 
it's going to be a great time to trade currencies moving forward, by the way. I mean, this is not just the Brexit, you know, great the British pound situation. You're going to be looking at a lot of volatility and a lot of different pairs out there coming up soon here. So that being said, by the way, I saw a bunch of commercials about robo advisors and like like they're going to that's the new way to solve everybody's problem in the investment community. So you go on Betterment or Wealthfront. If you go to those two sites, if you've never explored what these things are about, you probably hadn't. Um, but go there. I mean, this this kid comes on on the commercial on Betterment, and this is how sick this is. He's you know, it's better. <laughs> so they ask you five questions on their website. And because they made a nice, pretty website and asked five questions and somehow give you exactly what you're supposed to be doing moving forward based on five questions that they ask on a website, they've collected over $4 billion. And what the catch thing is for them is, obviously, they're showing like a 1% management fee. I'm going to digress a little bit more here. They're showing a 1% management fee as your traditional management fee, and they're showing 0.15% over here. Then they're showing you the savings over time, over 20 years of how that builds up. But they don't factor in what are they doing with the money. I mean, like they're allocating things, you know, based on their, the five questions that you answer. And the 1% management fee – obviously doesn't take into – that takes into consideration that that's an actual map of what they're doing as far as actually trying to make you money. So the 1% with another money manager or an actual financial planner in the case of, you know, people investing money, um, you know, they may, they may make 10% this year and Betterment's scheme, if you will, may lose 10%. So what is, you know, what is a 0.85% management fee – on a hundred grand, what is that? Eight hundred and fifty dollars discount. Oh, I saved eight hundred and fifty dollars, but I lost ten grand. I could have paid actually not eight hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, saved eight hundred and fifty dollars. And 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 in my one percent thing over here that I actually ended up losing eight hundred and fifty dollars on the on the management fee, I made ten grand. So net net, I'm up over nine grand not dealing with betterment. If you guys have never looked at that, take a look at it. Go to Wealthfront or go to Betterment. And I think they've got a picture of that kid that tells you everything's going to be okay on the site. I'd love to hear comments uh, from you guys about that. If anybody's explored that, um, I think we're, at, we're actually doing a site for another – we're programming another site for another financial planner. They're asking – I think it's 150 questions to kind of dump you into buckets so they can actually look at the data, do an analysis on their own, and then do something good for the client based on not just taking five questions and figuring out your, uh, your future on five questions. We'll be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. So <clears throat> I'm showing on the screen here just to digress even farther down the. Uh, down the hill. Here's Betterment's pricing scheme. So it, let me just tell you what this is about. And man, Tom or somebody else on TFNM may have already kind of explored this scheme, if you will. Um, okay, so you put a let's just let's just get okay. You put approximately 100 grand in there. There's a 21 dollars a month. Well, it's 25.25 percent annual. If you eclipse 100, then they're giving you even more of a discount. There's the 1% annual. Here's the savings over 20 years. But, it, you know, it doesn't tell you. The, and what this is about is it's about accumulation of, you know, assets under so-called management. All they're doing these days with this is you, you have relatively large risk relative to the markets in general <laughs> based on based on the five questions that you answer to put you into a master management plan scheme scheme. So again, you can play around with this. You can look at it. You probably already have, but um, you know, this doesn't factor in, a, you know, whether they're a good manager or not, they're happy with just the full beta of the marketplace pretty much. And a lot of guys are going this route now because it's better to kind of work on this scene over here than it is and, and just kind of be, you know, to outperform the market in their mind is an insurmountable task, okay? They know they can't do it. When I say they, a lot of these money managers, you look at, you know, a lot of the mutual funds, whatever. So when the market goes down and everybody's seeing the S&Ps maybe down, whatever, 10% for the year, if they're down 10%, that's the luck of the draw. They're like, okay, wow, man, tough market. Eh. I used to be a money manager. Anyway, I'm, I'm not me. I'm just saying, you know, that's what they're saying. So if the market goes up, they want to definitely participate. So if the market goes up 15%, they want to, they want to try to make 15%, and they're just going to be at the mercy of the marketplace, and it's better for them to just focus on collecting money and scalping, scalping you for this fee with absolutely no, 
uh, you know, no wits whatsoever except putting you in the ETFs that are mapping the marketplace. Okay, so I see I'm getting way off base here, and we got some questions. Paul, gold today. Let's get into that. Thanks for bringing me back into sanity here so we can talk about the markets. Isn't it nice how Trump's kind of broken the ice, too? Like, you can say anything you want to now, and it's not that big of a deal, whatever you say. The Pioneer. Here, okay, here we go. 1286. We just blew through that little thing yesterday. Uh, talked about not shorting against that weekly unfair high. Talked about taking some weight off. Now we're kind of getting into a whole new paradigm, getting above 1286. We've got this in the scanner. What's going to happen to gold today? I don't see gold slowing down. I mean, if you've got a long trade on and you left some weight on, like you know, we had talked about just taking some off the table uh, and, and just kind of waiting patiently, you know, we could get a retracement back into 1286. Ultimately, that's generally, you know, better than a, be, way better than a coin, coin toss, what generally happens. Um, so I got to sit here and just kind of wait myself. I can't buy this up here. Gold may go to 1400 quickly. I mean, there's this Brexit thing is is going to be unsettling. And again, we're having a whole show on that on Monday. So guys, please, you know, get up early, Tammy. Get the coffee. And we'll have a good show on Monday about that in particular. So what do you do with it now? I think, you you know, I'm waiting and seeing. Um, if you're looking at this trading on a short-term basis, you still don't have anything to lean on here. That 1291, 1286, this was, if you look at the way these 240s act, you can really get some great entry points just letting these 240s kind of regulate that trade up. You know, you want to you wanna see another 240. You want to see at bare minimum another 240 with some more inflection points down here. But that weekly could be revisited, meaning that, you know, 1291, 1286, kind of DMZ down there, collection area. That's where if somebody's short, they're going to be seriously trying to cover. Might be a little bit of a free, feeding frenzy on the long side there. All right. Here we go. Notes. Uh, you know, this has been the easy trade, and it still proves itself out to be that way. So, you know, market's coming down. Notes are going up again. Market started selling off yesterday. Notes flew back up again this morning. A uh, little bit of a may have peaked out here. So what we're looking at on the notes now, I think you've got to be looking at 132.03 as support on this. You still you cannot short this product. You know, it's, it, the market goes up, the thing spins sideways, markets go down. Then you've got some arbitrage situations, if you can call it that, some intermarket spreading. Uh, where, you know, Tom talks about this all the time. You've got the boon. You've got, you know, some of the things going on in uh, in some other countries as far as rate structure. Spain, uh, you know, I mean, massive debt. Their rates are lower than ours. I mean, these these are all things you've got to be looking at is it's probably the riskiest thing in the world to be short treasuries on a long-term basis. Um, you may have some trading opportunities here, but they're very short-lived on the short side. So blocking out one side of the marketplace, blocking out the short side, looking for support, looking for breakouts, that's kind of the way we look at things on this show. This is definitely one of those cases. All righty. Crude, you know, I wanted to short this thing yesterday and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. We were kind of hovering up there, and we closed below this 48.14. Talked about that getting back down below this and being short. I just didn't pull the trigger myself, but it's kind of coming true. And ultimately, thank God Larry's on my side here, 45.73 is going to be that kind of pullback point um, for crude oil to kind of look at a trading opportunity down there. I think he's 45-ish is what he told me. So... A little bit of a collection area, more than likely, between 45 and 45.73. I'm going to start stepping in a little early on that one. Uh, let's, take, let's take a look, look at beans really quick. Um, finally had some rain around here. I got, some of the guys are, you know, when, when you try to price things ahead of time, if you're an elevator, a lot of times you've got contracts with these farmers. And you're saying, okay, well, wow, they should produce 147 bushels an acre in this part of the state, blah, blah, blah. 
And then if it doesn't rain right in the, you know, tassel formation of the kernel area, blah, 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 you know, those kinds of things, then they've shorted futures against a proposed yield that, you know, the farmer and those guys have kind of balanced out. So got some rain around here. Those guys are breathing a little easier because then their, then their equations are, are not as balanced as, uh, yeah, Paul, I hear you. <laughs> since 63 um, on the short side on crude oil. So anyway, that's the situation on uh, on on soybeans. We're looking at support now at 1130 on the November contract. We're there right now. We're going to talk about this relative to the dollar and a couple other things. We come back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally weighted performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I hope we're doing okay technically here. I heard a little static at the end. Um, dollar, again, 94.39.40. Talked about not really the back up the truck situation, but the chance for this to ultimately get back up into those weekly on fair lows. Got a ways to go here, guys. And uh, if you're on a short-term basis, get into a little bit of resistance here on the 240s. Um, but remember, those dailies, that's what we were banking on. And the launching pad situation uh, around that 94.39 had some really good trading opportunities there. And yesterday, 
you know, I had a short euro trade on. I'm going to go into that really quick. Where are we at? Let me get the euro stuff up. And we're going to talk about those S&Ps in a second, Russ, and that uh, weekly peelback situation. So, you know, along, along this is the euro. This is the spot currency. Uh, this is just going to be unsettling for a little while. And that Monday show on the Brexit thing, we're going to do pretty much the whole whole Monday show on Brexit. Steve Banger's going to be on if you guys didn't catch that earlier. But about the time the euro was was kind of – this is resistance on the euro. Dollar was basically on support. So those are really cool situations when you've got some clear information and fences to lean on as far as playing defense. Short euro, in this case, long dollar. In the other case, I, I, you know, I don't see this really having an issue at least getting down to 111.43. That's where I've got some some targets on initially that weekly POC, if you will. Remember, this is the top of the mountain. We're almost there. I'm going to hang in there till that happens. It, it really was disturbing that we had kind of rallied back up in that inflection point again. I actually stayed in this trade, let the stops in, tried not to look at it, did one of these deals. And because uh, sometimes, you know, playing around with trailing stops, uh, cutting trades off early. Uh, you know, it's it's always difficult to let things ride, but uh, I think we've got some more juice left in this one on the euro selling off. The yen, uh, and we're going to get back to those S&Ps in a second, Russ, and we're going to talk about your question in the den. But as we look at the yen, you know, this is one of those things where we tried to block out the long side, the short side. As after we kind of caught this 105.50 up into 110.40, we talked about that seemingly every day. But, you know, you want to see a weekly close, and then you want to see these things come back and retrace and then pick a battle again possibly or not. We didn't get a weekly close. Now we've been falling apart. Bank of Japan's coming out saying uh, certain bullish things for the currency, and I don't understand with their economy still not doing well uh, what that's doing for them. They're a major exporter, as you know. So right now, this is still a no trade. Um, we're getting down past now where our bounce point was. We haven't talked about buying this again because this is not what you want to see. You want to see things come off these long-term buy points, if you will, like we had last time or a couple of weeks ago, actually a month and a half ago. And uh, you want to see them not go back and revisit these situations. Now, uh, this particular instrument there's no there's no edge here so this is kind of a stay away the trend if you look at the trend here without question on the long on the uh, long term it's been down but again you know this is something we've just kind of tried to try to get back in the balance area on the weekly didn't happen so what have we missed we, we caught 500 500 pips moving up and we've we've uh, not caught 500 pips moving down but that's okay that means losing zero all right, so I think we've got a caller, Dave from Clearwater. Dave, you there? What's going on, Mr. Logan? Hey, Dave. Good to, good to hear your voice again. How are you? Um, I'm doing doing well, man. How are you this morning? Good. Doing real good, actually. Thank you. Got a uh, got a question for you. Yep. Trying to uh, venture off some of my my favorite uh, trading mechanisms, uh, mostly the you know S and P, oil and natural gas. Uh -huh. and, I'm, and I'm kind of venturing out here lately and doing uh, some currency trades and some uh, commodities trades. Okay. And the, the question I got for you, and the, the reason for my call is you made a comment a minute ago, a couple minutes ago, about, and, and, I, and I don't know if I misunderstood you, but something about the impact of dollar and soybeans. I'm currently short the, the uh, 420 uh, soybean meal. And uh, I was just wondering if the dollar, let's say, like, Disaster happens in Europe. England pulls out. Pound, you know, does what it's going to do, and the market's changed. Dollars spike along with gold. Does that have a strong correlation as, as to how it would impact soybeans? I Dave, that, I just don't know. Dave, your 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 audio just changed significantly. I can't hear you anymore. Are Sorry you there? about that. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can hear you now. Sorry about that, John. I don't know. I was passing. I'm in my car driving here. I was passing a no tower, but so so um, you're short. You're short soy short soy meal, and you're worried yeah. about the dollar trade. 
Well, I don't know bit. if there's if that impacts it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't know. This is kind of like new territory for me, so I wasn't so I was curious for your input. Well, it's 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 gonna um it's gonna have some default impact, but you know it it may not be big. Let me let me pull up soy meal. What's what 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 month are you in, and what what's the symbol if you don't? DM, okay. DM. What's the symbol again? On, on East signal, like I don't. M like Mike. I'm sorry. Go ahead. B M. B M. Hold on, just a second. V V V like zebra. C M. Okay. Uh, what month? Prop month. Okay. What 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 month is that on soy meal right now? Do you know? I believe it's the July month. July. Okay. Uh, dang on it. I don't look at this that often. Uh, let me let me find out what it is. Hold on, just a second. Dave, you still there? Yes, sir. I'm working on it. Okay, no let's see here. It is QM, I believe, here. Let me see. On this, let me see if that's the case here. QM. Yeah. Uh, it's probably a little different symbol for each trade, but through thinkorswim, it's uh, ZM. Let me see. Yeah, wait. Okay, so I've got July soy meal up right now. Okay. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, just because of what's going on with the dollars, not necessarily. I mean, I'm looking at this. You got some. I, I tell you what, this, you know, this, I'm looking at the weekly right now, Dave, and I'm showing it on the screen. We've got a new weekly profile attempting to appear. That's relatively decent in your favor right now, but like uh, somebody actually just stated in the den, um, yeah, I think I, I think this is kind of playing with fire a little bit. I mean, you've got a long-term trend up here. You're coming back down into support right now on the daily, and uh, I think the grain complex could actually move even higher. So, I mean, if you've got anything in this, you're kind of sitting on support now. Uh, that's my take on it, Dave. I mean, you, you're you're kind of, you, you know, you might have some you might have some points in this, but I mean, this is a little bit of a scary trade to me on the short side. <laughs> thanks, hey, Dave. Thanks for thanks for calling in, Dave. Thanks, we, got, we got to get a break. Okay, cool. All right, thanks, buddy. guys. We'll be right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Thanks for coming back, guys. Here's that soy mill July thing, and, and uh, John from Philadelphia stated clearly, in fact, in a crystal manner, uh, that this thing needs to be rolled. Um, so, in addition to that, in itself, let's get out of it. Uh, I, you know, we've got support here on our uh, daily, and this thing's. I know we've got a weekly. Pill. There's soy mill. It's in the scanner. I don't even know why I was searching for the symbol. It's in the scanner, like an idiot. I was not remembering that we have it in here and uh so we have a lot of different futures in the scanner most of the usual suspects you can get all these inflection points you can definitely see that see that 59 there that means we've been in a protracted uptrend even though we're within a balanced state right now on the daily we just basically bounced off those daily unfair lows here if that was if it was near the noise level of that it would say bottom also there just like it says bottom on soybeans um you know these are uh the trend is your friend type things and um yeah you can think things are up too high uh you know and sometimes there's a lot of points you can make and things that run up really high and make them down pretty quickly but uh man it's a scary game to play and anybody's been trading for a while hopefully we'll tell you that so let's go back to the s p's for a second had a question from russ about that about this here here's the breath situation um you know we got we started having a mixed bag a couple of days ago that's why i was a bigger fan of letting this thing fall apart a little bit and retrace back up into 2075 2077 for that high probability trade if it didn't work out it didn't work out give yourself a little bit of room to be wrong above 2077 i think we hit 2079 so now uh if you go into the future section and you look at uh, let's see here, where's that? DS. Okay, so we got a got a uh, a yellow peelback happening on the weekly. So what does that mean? So let's go back to the charts. We could look at the charts in the scanner, but let's just take a look at them in here. Now, considering that we're with now, if we have this close within the balanced area of Friday close, we may have a new profile appear. And when this profile may edge down, you're going to have some new inflection points. But like I said earlier, right now, we're focused on the breadth and we're focused on this POC on the weekly. It's a little bit of a resting point possibility. I'm still, I'm, and I'm blocking out the long side right now. Got a mixed bag. I think we could explore this fair auction a little farther down. And I love how this thing has, you know, closed below, go back and retested that DMZ up top 75, 77. We're at a point for shorter term traders. I think you got to just kind of take a look at this as, hey, we made 20 points or 25 points. Got to be happy with that. Things don't move in a straight line. POC in the weekly has got to be paid attention to. But, you know, I normally don't try to factor in too much of a percentage of a trade on fundamental things happening. But, again, you've got some real serious adjustments that may be happening next week across the globe. Markets don't like that type of thing. It's uncertainty, and I think you need to just kind of block out the long side here 
And, uh, you know, so what does that mean? That means I'm keeping some weight on this trade on the short side. Here's the 240s. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to continue to hold on to some of the shorts here, but I've taken some of them off based on trying to lock in some profits and, you know, having a uh, possible free trade on the board. And those are the types of things that are really cool to do. Okay. All right. So we've covered that. We've talked about crude. We've talked about gold a little bit. Um, let's talk about the XLF here. This is one, you know, I've been extremely not interested in being long this thing and getting back down below 2358. I still think we got 2204 on the horizon on this. It's not going to be in a straight line, folks. We're trading 2252 this morning. Um, that's your targets on the XLF. Finally, something to uh, raise our hand about when it comes to looking at that DTF. And we've, you know, this is, uh, again, you know, the 10-year that worst case scenario it goes sideways has been the easier trade rather than trying to time the S&Ps lately. The 10 year has been literally, you know, Tom's been talking about this, the, the relativity of our rates relative to, you know, other rates in the world, uh, you know, especially ones that have a lot of debt that have rates. Well, a lot of debt relative to, <laughs> relative to percentage of GTP relative to our debt. CPI came out, and it's, uh, at 8:30, let's take a look at that really quick. So you've got the uh, the tenure. I, I don't. I just don't see a reason to look at this as a, as it's gone too high. This thing can go higher. So let's look at the uh, the tenure after that CPI report. Not a lot of not a lot not a lot of reaction there. So initial support, short term support, 132.03 on this. Again, this thing can go higher. Uh, also, if you if you missed part of the show earlier, we were talking about <coughs> betterment and what the scheme is there. If you want to, if you don't know, know anything about how these guys have collected over four billion dollars under so-called management, take a look at the uh, recording of this show. You might find that interesting for guys who are joining late today. It's really shocking and almost criminal the way they portray themselves, and you'll hear the upside and downside of a situation like that as I talked about earlier. Let's take a look at the XLE really quick. Uh, this is one where again we're trading 6640 pre-market it looks like. Let me just make sure that's the case. Yep. So got a new profile attempting to appear on the weekly. Uh, 6640 is basically right at support again. I think oil could head lower. We talked about 4574 I think Larry's around 45 on that trade. That's where we're, that's where targets are on that. So that's the situation when it comes to oil and the uh, the XLE. I think you've at least got 65.27 in order on on that kind of relativity towards the crude possibly relaxing farther down south. And uh, you can use the scanner to find some gems. You guys know this going into some of these ETFs. Here's here's our daily situation. Um, XLU has been just incredible. To, we, you know, we've talked about blocking out the short side on this for a long time relative to the 10-year being in a, you know, just great situation to be long. So what does that mean? That means the thirst for yield. You've got some utilities. I mean, the utilities don't see a lot of problems with this one. And you've got great areas to buy support on this. And that 10-year being longish. This is the XLU. Had a little bit of a pullback yesterday, but I, I really still think this sector's the one to hide in at bare minimum. You've got huge support at 49.88 down into 49.71 on this trade. That's where your long-term stops could be, based on your appetite for risk. A little bit lower there, and uh, I don't think there's any sector rotation out of this thing right now. So uh, again, this is. This is something I'm extremely interested in still on the long side if you're looking for stocks or sector and stocks within the sector that are possible places to hide and possible places to do a kind of a sector pairs trade. Might want to take a look at that one. We'll be right back, guys.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So <clears throat> we're looking at the uh, euro. We talked about this earlier. I see this thing going down a little bit farther. Let's hit the currencies right before we have to go to end the show. Uh, the Japanese yen, um, stay away from that one. Not a lot of leverage there. Don't understand that one, actually. Australian dollar, we hit our targets the other day, 400 pip move, basically, um, up to 74.81. Uh, we're coming back down to the support on this. I'm not a huge fan of, of buying this again down here, but again, you've got some inflection points. You can lean on to play defense here. Uh, the China situation is uh, and not really anything to write home about. The Australian dollar's very much tied to what's going on there. Some just They dig holes and sell things to China. That's what they do. Let's take a look at the uh, Canadian dollar. This is another one that you know, we talked about, an indicator on this one, the devaluation, the going up. This is another kind of not leading indicator, just a relativity situation towards crude. I think that's why another reason I think crude's going to continue to head south here. Um, Larry's pointed out many times how that correlation is is pretty rock solid. Here's the ruble, somewhat similar situation there. Um, let's take a look at also as before we end the show. Uh, let's go back into just to sum up everything. Let's go back into the S and P's. This is one 2053s, a little bit of a target on the short term, but I think we could head a lot lower here. But it's not a free lunch. You know, you could get some spikes. 
Um, you've got 2057.50 short term kind of resistance there. I'm going to try to hang on to some shorts on the S&P right now. I've taken some off. Here's a picture on the uh, Shanghai. As I've told you, you know, we had we had some, and this is our weekly here. We had some good news this past week, but I don't have a lot of, I don't want to have a lot of, excuse me. What in the heck is going on here? Hold on. I don't know what's. I think East Sigma's got some mixed up data there. Apologize for that. We're gonna we're gonna avoid that one right now. The ten year still by the by the support on the ten year. Gold do not short it. I repeat, do not short gold. Beans, you're on a. Uh, a little bit of a support area right here around 11.30. XLU still love this trade from the long side buy support. You got 49.88 down into 49.71 stops below there. Let's take a look at the Nasdaq really quick for guys who are trading the Nasdaq the September contract. Uh, here's a September contract. Uh, I think you've easily got 43.39 in order on this trade still. The breadth on the NASDAQ, if we go into the scanner, I'm going to go into, let's see, I'm going to go into our dashboard. Actually, I'm going to go into our indices heat grid. We've added the Philippines and, and uh, Australia to this. So now we've got 19 different indices across the globe that you can see the internals. As you drill down into it, you can see the broad breadth calculations. I'm going to look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is almost going breadth negative on the long-term weekly. So if we get into that scene, I'm not going to be a big fan and interested in buying support on the NASDAQ. So that's, that's the picture there. And you can see the inflection points right there we just spoke of, 43.39. Stay tuned for Larry, guys. We'll be back again tomorrow. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.